So you lay down, you cast your spell. Mm -hmm. The two of you coming along? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> you breathe quietly and concentrate on your friend and the connection you hold. I'm gonna touch the yarn around my wrist. And like you're pulled into the current of a stream far stronger than you were expecting, you immediately slip into a dream and you feel your consciousness not directed towards your intent, but pulled, dragged, yanked. The two of you pulled alongside like you are tethered and chained to something that is being carried away by a flood. You're all of a sudden being torn through the multicolor strands of the sky. You are being dragged across the weave of ley lines and magical energy and Xander at a speed you can't comprehend until they all go red, where everything is pulled towards, where all streams are directed. The singular nexus of all magic and Xandria here. The strong column of red energy, the beam that still holds, piercing upward from the center of Marquette into the now locked, unmoving moon of Ruidus. There it looms in the sky above, between the ground, the bridge. You are pulled into and are fighting from the force of being dragged into it. Make a perception oh, check. Oh, that's good, that's good. Do I still get my bless, too? Yes. I'll, I'll allow it for this. I'll allow <laughs> it. What does that do? Plus D4. Plus. I can't believe I don't remember that. You leave the little bitch come here, you. <laughs> um. <laughs> Perception? Mm hmm 19. Oh, wait, yes, 19. 19. As you're resisting this continuously funnel flow of magical energy that is being brought into the place right above where the Malleus Key sits, the energy then being redirected, just this continuous stream upward and simultaneously downward, both passing past each other. You withstand and glance up and you can see where it intersects with the red moon, the faint imagery of a weave of golden thread that is ever so gently broken and pulled apart, where that beam has passed through. And as you glance back down towards where the Malleus Key is, there is just a faint red storm gathering of dust, just swirling around like a slow-moving cyclone, right here in the center of the Hellcatch. And for a brief instant, you swear you can see people down there. Dozens maybe a hundred or so people. They're not people, at least not how you know them. They're red skin. No, they're the, the red, the red aura. <clears throat> At which point, you feel yourself being pulled closer and closer into this nexus. It's getting loud in your ears, the sound, shh, the static growing stronger and stronger. Still, you have very little mooring at this point. What do you do? Oh God, may I, may I try to grab her? You can certainly try. Uh, okay. Go ahead and make, in this instance, make a, uh, a d20 roll and add your wisdom modifier. This is not a physical connection, this is pure willpower. Never one. Oh no. Oh, wow. You are shunted from the dream. Oh. You feel yourself dragged back through the ever-growing weave of energies in the sky above and come back to consciousness. Are you okay? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I, just, I saw something really bad. Imogen, what are you doing? Oh, um, can I try to use all of my telekinetic force and push myself away from it? You can certainly try. Roll d20 and add your charisma modifier. Um, I, I am going to cast Earthbind on Imogen. Her 
physical body? On a physical body. Okay. The moment I see her, can I cast guidance on sleeping images? I don't know if that does anything. I think in this instance, she's physically and yeah. spiritually separate places. Is it my charisma saving throw or my modifier? Your modifier. Oh. Eleven. Eleven. You feel yourself losing ground wherever your spiritual essence is being pulled closer and closer still. You begin to feel the scattering of energy, like 100 feet away, 80 feet away, 50 feet away, and it feels like it burns. It feels almost like, like, like the sun is burning your skin, but it's not heat, it's just energy. And a weird part of you wants to just run into it. That little voice in the back of your head that tells you to just jump from the cliff when you're near the edge, it's just telling you, go. Run into it, embrace it, take yourself into it. Is she getting Become with farther it. from me? In yeah, and you're being dragged slowly along with her. You're tethered to her consciousness. Oh, God. Okay. I'm going to, but I'm not touching her physically, right? No. Okay. In the dream, if I can, I'm going to shoot my grappling hook at her and try to just latch on tight, tight. You will that, and there is no arm, there is no grapple. You are just a moat of spiritual energy in the middle of this dream, tethered to her. Um, then I will, uh, I will uh, try to just, with again, with my will, just try to pull or push us out of the stream. Make a wisdom check, please. Travis? Pretty good. Wisdom check. Yeah, so add your wisdom modifier to it. 17. 17. You lock into place, and as opposed to pushing her out of the way, you at least become an anchor. And as you kind of hold in there, you feel that kind of, that tether between the two of you go taut, and you are now maybe 40 feet from it, just watching this endless wave, this beam that you can't even, you can't even conceive how, how large it may be at this proximity. It almost fills your periphery to the front to the side to the side, and it's just just little bursts of red energy up and down, up and down, and occasionally you see what looks like entities. Like, you, you're, you, you don't know if it's just bursts of power, if it's people, what it is. It's, you, you can't quite grasp it, but a little part of you just wants to break that tether. A little part of you wants to just let go. I'm gonna go stand Sassy over G. Imogen. What are you doing? Wake her up! I'm gonna slap her in the face okay. and I'm gonna scream. Imogen! Wake up! <laughs> I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, shit. Am I trying to succeed here? Please. Whoa. <laughs> Should that count? Because it just escaped out of my hands. Well, that's the truth. Um, wisdom saving throw. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. <laughs> At the moment that you feel yourself begin to to even consider giving in to this primal urge that's telling you to just release and embrace, you feel this shock of pain in your head, and you have just enough strength in the back of your mind to pull out of that primal urge acknowledge where you are and embrace the pain and the sound of your voice being shouted, recognizing the sound of Fern's voice cutting through. And in that moment, you just uh, put all of your frontal focus into escape. And with that moment, you both are yanked from this vision and back into your conscious minds. What the fuck? Right. <laughs> 